Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Mirror Neuron which means watch and learn and today we have brought for you a new interview question and also we are going to provide you the answer for that. So the question is can you explain using the mathematics how to solve the loss function in logistic regression and also how that can be used to update the model parameters. So let's look into the answer and if you already know the answer try to share that in our comment section so let's dive into the solution okay so let's look into the answer to our question so previously in our last lecture what we have seen that the loss function of the model parameter m is given by something like this the negative and the summation from i to n and we have yi log of the sigma function xi dot m plus we have 1 minus yi log of 1 minus sigma i m and in order to find the solution we need to take the gradient of this loss function right and in order to solve that gradient first uh, let's recall few rules that we already know so this will be some helpful uh, function that will help us in solving this problem so the first one is so if we have a function log of x then the derivative of this function with respect to x is given by 1 over x that we already know and because we are solving here a log function so you would need this uh, rule Okay, the second thing that we know is that sigma of x i m, which is basically our prediction value of y, is given by 1 plus e to the power of minus x i m. So keep in mind this x i and all these things are vectors. I might miss out in writing this vector symbol, but keep considering them as vectors. So that is the second rule. So this is my 1, this is my 2, and the third one is a interesting property of this sigmoid function so this is a sigmoid function right so the sigmoid function says that if we have a graph like this and we know that our output value will go from 0 to 1 right so our output will look something like this okay so, and let's consider this is half and this is 0 and here this is say for example t okay and this is my y so for such sigmoid function it is actually symmetric and it is symmetric around this value half so we can write sigma of t plus sigma of minus t is actually is equal to 1 okay and if we translate it for our requirement where we have x i m so basically your sigma of x i m plus sigma of minus x i m is basically equal to 1. So these are the three things that we are going to use while solving this uh, derivative. So let's look into that. Also, uh, you know, in order to solve this, we have to make uh, keep in mind that we are taking the derivative of this d uh, loss function of the model parameters m and this m is basically the list of all the model parameters that we have but first we'll solve it for one particular model parameter and that will represent by j0 now you can have more model parameters like j0 j1 j2 j3 and so on so for example if we have a single feature then we probably have two model parameters and it will keep increasing as we have more features but first we'll take a derivative with respect to only one model parameter and we'll then see how it would look like when we have more model parameters also look here that we have one term here for which we have to calculate the derivative so this will be our first term and this is our second term and now remember that this is also equivalent to sigma sorry i have to choose a color now okay so this we know that sigma of x i m plus sigma of minus x i m is equal to 1 so if we know the derivative of this one we can easily calculate this one as well 
right so let's see how to solve the first term so basically we are taking the derivative with respect to a single model parameter so our next task would be to of course translate it to for more model more model parameters and this will be the derivative of log of sigma x i times my coefficient vector so these are all vectors let's see how to solve this one okay so my delta of with respect to mj naught of log of sigma xi times m this is equivalent to we know that the derivative of log of x is 1 over x so in this case it will be 1 over sigma xi m but then it is not x directly so we need to take the partial derivative again and it will be dmj naught with respect to sigma of x i and these are very standard derivative that we have already seen several times now we know what is the value of sigma x i m it is nothing but 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus x m now that it is already 1 over so it will be directly 1 plus e to the power minus x i m and then the derivative of this one is given by 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus x i m whole square times e to the power minus x i times m times minus of x i j or the jth feature okay so if i now so you can see there are common terms so you can cancel and rearrange them so it would look like 1 over 1 plus e to the power x i dot m there is a plus sign now okay and it is x i j naught okay now if you see this term is basically your sigma times minus of x i m it is all about you know replacing the values that we already know times x i j naught and this is nothing but i can rearrange it as one minus sigma times of positive x i m right times my x i j naught okay now this above formula can be written as in a matrix form and this would look like uh, as a data matrix instead of the single row that we are showing so far but before we write the matrix form uh, let's see how it would look like uh, the final version so what i will do the x is at the very end so what we came up so far is d of mj naught of the first term just say the first term and this is nothing but we came up with 1 minus sigma x i m times x i j naught now as i was telling you we were only looking at a single model parameter now if i have to write it for all the model parameters for the first component and this would be and if i bring this to the front then it will be a transpose right so it will be x i transpose because it's a dot product so if i bring it to the front then in order to match the multiplication rule for dot product i have to transpose it and i can say it is one over uh, sorry sigma times x i dot m interesting so now that is for the first term now similarly similarly what is the solution for the second term which is log of 1 minus sigma x i m we can also calculate this as equal to minus of x i t 1 minus sigma times of minus of x i times m and this is equal to x i t there will be a minus sign here 
xit minus and this is your simply sigma xim because we know that the sigma of t plus sigma of minus t is equal to 1 across that half right so it is symmetrical so now we have the solution for both the terms uh, logarithmic terms in our loss function now let's put this back into our original equation and see how it looks like so my original loss function derivative with respect to all the model parameters will and if I plug in those values that I have just now calculated so it will look like more like this i is equal to 1 and this whole term will be basically yi and then I have already calculated all these terms so I am just plugging them back here sigma times x i m plus 1 minus y i minus of x i transpose sigma of x i m so basically I have plugged all the values and after rearranging and cancelling the common terms what I get is basically your summation from i is equal to 1 to n your x i t and here you will see this looks like now the error function of my OLS method looks very similar to that the only difference is this sigma function here so if you can see here this is my original y value and this is my probability of the predicted value right so basically I have an error function here and in matrix form in matrix form this can be written as minus of so instead of just taking one um, record I'm taking the entire data matrix so it will be transpose my y bar minus sigma times of data matrix x dot product m and this is my the final solution to my loss function so if you see and compare this with your linear model the only thing that will be that is uh, not there in the linear uh, OLS method solution is that it looks exactly like this the only difference is instead of this Sigma function you will just have XM here so you can say that your linear model and logistic regression model looks very very similar okay now that we have the gradient so this is our gradient for the model parameters so now that we have the gradient we can use this value for updating our model parameters so my new model parameters will be equal to m old minus of the value that we got but that is already a minus there so it will be a plus so my learning rate times x t times y bar minus sigma of x m and this is my new model parameters and with that I'm going to try again so this is my gradient descent for logistic regression All right and also keep this in mind you will see in many mathematical notation there is a normalization factor or this value is divided by n that is the number of records which is done because at times we have seen that this value can go quite large if when we have a large data set and we have more model parameters this value can actually go become very very large so we can divide it by n without compromising with the actual solution because it will be normalized so the values will be very small in scale so it will not blow up but also it is not compromising with any other factors so we are safe to divide it with by the n and that is where you will see that your new m factors is typically given by eta over n that term here all right so i hope you have understood how to solve the gradient descent and the loss function solution for logistic regression and typically in interviews this is how you are going to explain and solve it i hope you have got a good angle to prepare so thanks for watching and please make sure to subscribe to our channel and we are going to bring to you more interesting concepts and interview questions case studies etc you have a nice day